Hello and welcome back. In this lecture, we are going to learn about Azure Disks, which covers also managed and unmanaged disks. And also, we are going to learn about type of disks within this short lecture. And at a point, we are going to actually create a virtual machine or we would actually add hard disks, how we can add. That's nothing but the disks, how to add to the virtual machine. So let's jump into exactly what is Azure Disks. So if you're quite new to Microsoft Azure, maybe you're just hearing Azure Disks. But if you're in this industry for Microsoft Azure world, then you might be knowing already managed and unmanaged words, uh, familiar words. So let's talk about the difference and how that actually can be easily differentiate unmanaged and managed let's say in the olden days or a few years back microsoft used to manage all the virtual machines disks right you know if you are creating a virtual machine you need to have a hard disk right so this hard disk used to come from a storage account yes um, that's additional dependency that's additional scale up that you have to do it so why we are talking about this at this point is let's say you have maybe 100 or maybe maybe a 400 500 virtual machine you need to actually scale two things here not just a virtual machine you also have to scale about your storage account because if storage account is not performing well your virtual machine doesn't perform well even though you have a great processor for that virtual machine and you have a great uh, good performance of the ram and all that that all you know waste of use because the disk is not faster than what you expected and also we used to have a single point of failure especially the storage account if storage account failed in that region or maybe it's not working you all of virtual machine goes down so that's the problem with the unmanaged disk so what we talked so far as a summary within on man uh, within unmanaged so you need to actually create a non top level resource of a disk which comes from a storage account and also you're going to manage that uh, storage account manually because you need to you know think about your performance and all of that and also uh, you used to have a very limited high availability because of the storage account limitations and also the limited functionality because of uh, the storage account as a dependency now let's move to the uh, manage so why we are talking about managed disk so later point microsoft has moved to something called managed disk and now they just call it as a azure disk but for the operating system only a dedicated disk we used to call as the managed disk so this managed disk will be a there's no dependency on this managed disk it's a created by microsoft uh, for a better performance to address all all the previous issues that were encountered in the unmanaged disks so it's a uh, non dependent on any of your storage account so it's not a responsible for a kind of any kind of you know, configuration on your storage account it supports high availability functionality regularly improved by microsoft because it's purely managed by the op managed by microsoft that's why it's a managed disk so that's a major difference so let's jump into the disks word so if you look at as your disk as a word so what happens is there are type of disks you have so i can differentiate here four different type of disk so we'll start with os disk uh, os disk is nothing but you know as the name stated like you know it will have the operating system gets installed so it's the one of the mandatory and it is the one of the required for your virtual machine to boot up because it will have the pre-installed operating system and this disk is a by default similarly there is additional uh, built-in disk uh, which is available that's a default disk we call that is for the storage disk so what exactly storage disk is let's see the other type of disk what we talked uh, is either managed uh, disks or maybe os disk in this case so it or maybe in this case maybe data disk or uh, any other disk basically what happens is they actually come from a virtualized storage account or virtualized storage so so that virtual storage will give you some kind of you know a LAN kind of thing that would actually comes to you and it will be connected for your operating system and you would be installing maybe operating system here or maybe a 
applications from the data disk but temporary disk is completely different so what exactly temporary disk is it will give you a limited space and that space can be you know used for your swap files so it's that hard disk space is not really a virtualized disk it's actually physical disk why i'm talking about physical is for your virtual machine uh, which was connected or which way which might be created on a uh, hyper-v server that hyper-v will have some disk and out of that disk it will have this specific v and will have a, a temporary disk so that can be used maybe a swap file all that can be you know used uh, for a better performance purpose so that's called temporary disk and whatever the data you're gonna write in this temporary disk uh, it's gonna you know wipe up so it's not a persistent so when it's a persistent it should you know stick to the machine but temporary disk is not like that because tomorrow when you restart your virtual machine so you might get a physical disk from a different a uh, physical disk or maybe a, f a different virtual uh, physical server it's not the uh, you know persistent whereas a disk which are persistent we can use for different purposes like maybe for your database can be installed or maybe your applications can be installed so that's called persistent disk so this persistent disks are nothing but your data disk so whatever other than the operating system that's a waste disk and temporary disk so mostly we use the data disk for your installing your applications let's say i wanted that to be a one tb of uh, space so you can simply assign that and the final option is fml os disk so that's nothing bad actually it's a special type of operating system uh, disk which will contain all the operating system installation binaries and all that it's not uh, gonna use for your application so it's just used for your uh, installation purpose so it's not for your data uh, to be used for any different purposes so that's the you know last and the latest version latest type of disk that you have with the disk so let's jump into the Azure portal and try to have a look on what's managed and also different type of disks that can be attached now I logged into Azure portal and you can see here I have a virtual machine so if I want to connect any of the disks I need to go to under settings and disks so this is where I can actually uh, add any additional disk so you see here this is a disk which was you know created and it was automatically added by Microsoft when we tried to create any of the virtual machine so this uh, specific disk is a managed disk so if I just click on that you'll come to know that it's going to be a completely managed disk and I can go for the sizing and performance and I can change the current size which is you know 128 GB to maybe additional size and I can even go for operating system complete encryption at the disk level also that's an additional layer of protection that I can do and if you choose as a rest uh, that's going to be customer managed uh, encryption key and if you have your uh, key vault services and you can enter your keys that would be used to encrypt this entire disk so if somebody is trying to you know unencrypt the data they don't get it actually if they try to record the data they are not gonna get it so that's an additional way of securing your disks it's key that to understand about the disk performance actually matches what type of the disk SQ you have selected if you selected the standard HDD it's gonna really impact uh, if you see IOPS that's the input output performance basically which talks about only 500 whereas if I just go to the premium it's gonna actually change based on the size uh, and it's you can get the 5000 also so it's a huge uh, input output so you can easily copy and paste the data or read and write operations can be you know uh, executed very quickly so you get the better performance so these are the type of the disks we call it from the p1 p2 p3 p4 you can actually check a link which is um, within this uh, video link as a resource uh, for the performance so when you go from the p1 to p80 the uh, performance gonna you know change and according to the cost also will be effective 
and if I just go back to my virtual machine one more time here if I want to you know add the virtual machine I will be simply you know create and add attach a new disk that's what I'm gonna do and uh, simply I can you know attach your whatever the LUN let's say I want to attach as a LUN 2 and give a disk name let's say this is my E drive or something like that for whatever the purpose so I can give that uh, and uh, later point uh, I can choose the type of the disk so based on that it's gonna charge let's say if you choose the premium disk that means uh, you're gonna build right away when I say right away the whether you use it he here the 40 GB if I just choose a 40 GB so whether you use that 40 GB or not you're gonna charge for 40 GB if I choose the SSD but if I choose the standard HDD if I choose maybe a 2 TB example still it's not gonna charge for me for the 2 TB instead whatever I store the data inside of my standard HDD let's say if I charge if I use only out of 2 TB 1 1 GB it's gonna charge for me only on 1 GB data it's not on 2 TB that's a major difference when you know uh, comes uh, when you look at for the pricing side especially for the disk so if you choose a premium you can actually build that means you're reserving that IOPS for you and the data is dedicated for you or that uh, dedicated space so you're gonna charge for that so you can you know attach like these and uh, for the better performance you can actually use the host caching and this is not recommended you if you enable on your domain controllers let's say you hosted a virtual machine within the cloud for your domain control make sure that you should choose as a no because your NTDS uh, doesn't work properly for the replication purpose if you choose the host caching so make sure that you disable that but for any other applications we never you know uh, do none or read only we actually go for read and write so that we get the better performance in terms of the disk read and write options so you can actually attach and then click on save that would actually comes back to the virtual machine as a new additional drive or the disk so later point you're gonna actually attach by running from the disk management from here uh, for example I'm just trying to show you without logging to the virtual machine and then uh, then if the disk is found you can go for initialization and then format and change the partition uh, letter drive letter all that can be done as a normal method so uh, that's all about the azure disks i hope this lecture is useful for you thank you for watching this make sure that you check out some of the documentation links on the performance that would really helps you in the ongoing lectures thank you